Ahoy there cruisers, welcome to Oslo in Norway, one of the most expensive ports and cities in the world. So first up on our all day tour of Oslo, yes, we are going to be looking at every single part of Oslo, which is really fantastic. We're in the sculpture park. Wow, first impressions are pretty cool. As we were driving through the city, I have to say it's absolutely beautiful. The buildings are gorgeous and this park is just wonderful, it's huge full of beautiful tall trees and I can see the sculptures ahead. I've got a feeling this is going to be a really good day. Oh my gosh guys, the sculptures are quite funny. I meant they're amazing but there are some pretty wacky poses anyway. Here's some things I came up with looking at them. It's Lord Voldemort. YMCA, Chucky's back. We are the champions. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. Gosh, I must remember to put some deodorant on. Apologies to all of the Norwegians. I just thought that was quite funny. But this is lovely. This park is so quiet. Again, we're so lucky about how quiet this place is. And the sun's peeping out again. Honestly, the weather has been superb. Very lucky little people here, I think. Anyway, let's go take a look at the fountains. The park is really strange, but really beautiful. It's a great way to start the day with a nice morning walk through this gorgeous park. It's all dedicated to one artist, Vigeland, and they have over 200 of his sculptures here. Like RuPaul, he also said, we're all born naked and the rest is drag. That's why all the sculptures are naked, because he didn't want people to be defined by their clothes, where they come from, their religion. He just wanted them to be defined by their, who they are as human beings. I think that's rather beautiful, don't you? That's lovely. Very ahead of his time, eh? And surely good for interrupting. I'm just here at home, chilling, doing one of my short 10-minute interactive Babbel lessons. And I really wanted to tell you about Babbel, who is this week's sponsor. We found Babbel is an essential app when we're preparing for any cruise. Not only is it super handy to be able to speak the local language, we find it gives us a new insight into the places, the people and the cultures of the ports that we visit. Wo finde ich den Hafen? Babbel's award-winning technology is scientifically proven to get you speaking a new language in just three weeks. Lessons are designed by real language teachers. There's no machine learning or algorithms. And you can literally do it anywhere, while you're here at home chilling, on a cruise, or when you're traveling. It's really awesome. So give it a go. Babbel has a 20-day money-back guarantee. And if you click the link in the description section below, you can get 65% off your subscription. Thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to my lesson. Hello, wie geht's? I'm actually secretly on the search for a coffee. <laughs> Me too. Secretly searching for coffee. We got up so early this morning. Oh my gosh, we so are, early. We are completely decaffeinated. I did go down to get a coffee, but it was 27 minutes past. And I was like, can I do it in three minutes? But I didn't want to be late for the tour. It's one of the downsides of touring, really, that you're on a schedule, so you've got to really stick to it. But And we're on quite a tight one today because the ship departs at 3.30. And our tour guide said that there's a lot to see in this, this amount of time. So... Apparently we need to be on time. Um, that's one of the upsides of um, touring. You get to see a lot in a very short time. Yeah. And you're guaranteed to get back on the ship in time. So that's, there's pros and cons to everything, but we're going to have a good one today because we're going to get to see a lot in a very short time. I know we're seeing some funny things, but in seriousness, guys, there's the sculpturism. Is it sculpturism? The sculptures here are absolutely spectacular. They are such pieces of art. They're so detailed and amazing, and obviously the Norway's taking care of them really well. We can see people cleaning the sculptures all around the park, so they take great pride in this, and it really is beautiful. We do really high, highly recommend visiting the sculpture park if you do come here. David, that's a bit of a compromising position. <laughs> David, <relax>. <laughs> <laughs> that was really beautiful, wasn't it? Gorgeous. And it ended with the circle of life. It was beautiful. Right, next stop, Mum, let's go. Sure. Come on then. Coffee. Oh, she needs a coffee too. You can see where I take it from, guys. I think cats are more desperate for coffee than we are. The next stop is the Open Air Museum. And we've got a private viewing. It was actually closed, but they've opened it just for our group. And it's a beautiful walk around again, outdoors, in the nature, in the countryside. And you'll recognise this. It's a traditional Norwegian church. It's beautiful. It is beautiful and it's very tall, but they've got lots of different buildings from lots of different 
times in history here. A lot of them have moved uh, from other parts of Norway to here. I do like an open air museum. Me Don't too. We've done quite a few now and they're all really good. So we just had a look at the summer school and we thought it was a reenactment. So we thought it was kids on a school trip, you know, coming to reenact what it was like back in the olden days. But no. No, it turns out it's a real school and that is actually what the school is like. It's a summer school, so you yes. send kids here in the summer and, and then they dress in traditional clothing. It's known for its traditional teachings, but it's an actual school. I thought there were actors. Me no, too. Were real kids. Oh, I thought I thought there were kids who were on a school trip because I remember doing something similar when I was a kid, and you went for the day and you dressed in traditional clothes for the day. But no, they go for the whole summer, and apparently it's very, very, very difficult to get a place for your yeah, child. It's very popular, but they're going to be churning butter in a minute and doing all sorts of traditional things. I just made that up. I don't know what they're doing. So now we're just walking through some of the traditional houses. These date back all the way from the 1600s and the 1700s, 1800s. They're beautiful. There's even one that has little holographic ghosts in it having a drink. Very Norwegian, exactly what you expect. So this is a great place to get some fantastic pictures and just enjoy the sunshine again. Look at this, guys, the sun. Look, she's back out again. How lucky are we? We are so lucky that we brought my mum on this cruise just because the weather has been Fan blumentastic. Oh, I can see our ship on the other side where we are now. So we've just came to the Maritime Museum. This place is awesome. It has some of the oldest boats in the world, including the oldest boat in Norway, over 2,000 years old. They also have a Viking boat as well. They're also undertaking a project where they're actually trying to build a brand new Norwegian Viking boat using all of the original tools and things. And we could see the guy in there just making a start on some of the pieces. So that's gonna be something awesome to see as well. So the location of the Maritime Museum is really spectacular. We've got an amazing view of all of the, I should imagine it's the seas, because I can see our ship on the other side. But we didn't have any coffee this morning because it was such an early start. We had to meet at half seven and we set our alarms for 7 a.m. So it was a very quick turnaround. We ran down to that theatre very quickly. So we've gone and got ourselves a lovely coffee and we've went and got this huge bun. I mean, the danishes and pastries in the whole of Scandinavia, as you know, are amazing. This one's sort of cream and coconut. But it's, look at it, look at it for scale towards my head. It's massive. Should we have a little bite of it and see what it's like? Oh, I need another taste. That's so good. Mmm, that's delicious. It's huge. The coffee and the two pastries was nearly $30. And it was just filter coffee as well. Nothing like espresso or anything like that. So very expensive. Oh, David, this boat's huge. Should we go up and see it? Let's go and see the boat. We know how much we love a boat and a cruise ship. Should we do a little tour of it? Let's do it. Let's, let's go. Let's see what the entertainment and the facilities are like on here. Well, welcome on board the MSC Fram. Let's take you on a full ship tour of this amazing ancient ship. Plenty of facilities, guys. We've got sails instead of engines to keep us going. We've got one toilet. Should we go take a look at the cabins? I'm not sure if they're going to be very nice or not. Well, enough of the outdoor areas. Let's head inside now. So this is a luxury inside cabin. Look at all of that room. My gosh, you can even get your uh, microscope out on there as well. It's even got all the latest luxuries of cruise travel. There's a seamstress on board. I'm sure they do dry cleaning over there as well. Maybe this is the ballroom. Who knows? Yes, fabulous. Now let's go find the disco in the theatre, shall we? And there's the lovely chef preparing our meals tonight. I'm sure it's going to be luxury cuisine all of the way. Welcome to the main dining room. I wonder what specialities they'll be serving this evening. Oh, I just bash my head. Remember Did those you? low ceilings. And remember to visit your muster station before we leave port. And this is, of course, where you keep your luggage. Oh, and welcome to the bridge. Now, this is a posh one, isn't it? You'll find no computers, electrical devices, GPS is here. It's all fly by wheel. Wait, let's head over there, shall we? Now the Fram was actually an icebreaker ship. So just look at this mock-up here. You can see all of the ice and rocks and things around. The front of the ship's got metal bands all the way around so it can bash through the ice and break through it. Absolutely fantastic. What an amazing tour of the ship. We've got to 
recommend it but guys remember it's very expensive if you're not on a tour the two different museums so this polar museum and the one next door are both 15 dollars each they are very small so it just goes to show you how expensive it is here in norway so do be prepared for that they do take cards or the local currency is the norwegian krona anyway let's head off to the next place what's your polar bear so it's time for our norwegian lunch and i have to say i'm a little bit nervous i wonder what's going to be on the menu could there be brown cheese? Could there be whale? Reindeer. Reindeer. Oh, so we sat down for our included lunch now. Thankfully, it wasn't too nuts. We were expecting whale and um, some really random dishes, which we had in our last one when we were in Tromsø. But it's a very normal buffet. It looks really good. There's some classics on there, some rye bread, chicken wings, potatoes. I've got meatballs as well. I do like the meatballs up here with some couscous. First things first, I need some meatballs in the mouth. Let's have a taste. Goodness gracious, great bowls of meat. They're delicious. Well, let's try chicken wing as well. I believe I can fly. So good that chicken before it was killed. They love rye bread here as well. Even though it's a bit hard, that's very normal here and they really do like it. But now it's dessert time. I got myself a coffee and what the heck have you got then? I don't know what I got. It looks very strange. It's some kind of like jelly with a, with a sauce. I'm going to taste the sauce first. So you pour the sauce over the top. Ooh. I don't know what the sauce is, but it, the sauce is really nice. It's almost like golden syrup. But then I got like this wobbly thing and I'm not, oh, it's really hard to get on your spoon, guys. Come on, come on. Oh, <sighs> success. But look at wobbles. I wonder what it is. No, that's not the one. I feel violated. Anyway, the rest of it was really nice. So the actual um, savoury food, really, really delicious, especially those meatballs. Yum. I'm going to move on now to the next place because, yes, this is a seven and a half tour. Oh, my gosh, it's a long one, which is fantastic. So we're going to get to see even more of Oslo. So should we go? So just to say as well, we bought a Coca-Cola in the bar. Eight dollars. That's more expensive than Disneyland. Crazy days. So if you're cheap, this isn't the place for you. So David, let's continue the tour. I actually don't know where we're going next, but I know that we're getting to see all of the hotspots. Yes, it's a whistle stop tour, so you get to hit all the most famous parts of the city in one day. It's great, and our tour guide's given us all of the facts and things, so it's fabulous. Right, next stop, let's see where we end up next, David. Oh my gosh, have you seen how high that is? It's massive! It's a gigantic ski slope and not in a million years would you get us up there. Oh my god, but guys, look at this edge. <gasps> Gotta hold on for dear life. And I'd be terrified just watching, wouldn't you? Yeah, so these are the seats and then the seats at the bottom of the arena as well. And there's even a troll at the other end as well. But oh my gosh, that is... um incredibly steep it's getting me a bit vertigo -y. and there's even a ski simulator if you're a bit chicken like me and don't want to try that for real but hey it's about 15 dollars for a three minute ride so again incredibly expensive the scandinavian countries are very expensive indeed but you already know that <laughs> by now anyway i know the jump is right guys my mum's just saying how amazing it is which it really is but it's time for our next stop this is a great tour there's so much to do and see Well, it's a bittersweet moment because we're at our final stop before we head back to the ship, but it's a good one. We've came to the Opera House, which is in the centre of Oslo. You get a beautiful view of the water, some fantastic views of the ships as well. There's not just the Opera House, you can also go to the National Library as well as the Central Station. But yeah, like we said in the name of the episode, it's one of the most expensive ports in the world, but honestly, do not let it put you off. One of the great things about cruising is that you can go back onto the ship for dinner and things. It's expensive because they earn a lot more money here in the Scandinavian countries such as Norway. The taxes are super high. So taxes on products is 25%, which is one of the highest in Europe. And the tax on wages and things is up to 52%, which is absolutely crazy. So you're gonna find things like supermarkets, bars, restaurants, attractions are all gonna be a lot more expensive. Taxis are gonna cost you an absolute fortune. So if you can do, make sure you walk around. We are doing a shore excursion today. 
mainly because my mum is here and she can't walk and things as far as we can and it is very warm. It included lunch, it included all of them entrances into the museum and things and we get to tick off all of the major things. So shore excursions can be quite good. It was $250 per person. So again, not cheap, but if you're gonna do things DIY in this sort of place, it's gonna be expensive anyway. So some of the prices you're gonna be paying about $70 per person for an average two course meal, which is quite expensive. And that's just in a normal lowerish end restaurant. It's gonna cost you about $12 for a beer in a pub, which is about double the price of London in the UK, which is also expensive. And fuel is well over $10 a gallon, which is even more expensive than the UK, quite considerably more expensive. So you're gonna be paying a lot more than you are at home, but do not let it put you off. Save up a little bit of money and really enjoy yourself. We haven't really spent any money today. We really haven't. We've spent the tour and if we were doing it DIY, it would have only have been local transportation. There's lots of trams and trains in every port as well. It is just an expensive and rich country, but in return, you're gonna get a lot of rich history and a fantastic time. The people here are absolutely amazing. They're so friendly and so lovely. We might actually go and have a look in the opera house and the, um, the library as well, because apparently they're fantastic, but we are running short on time. So let's go and have a look at them now really quickly, shall we? It's ages since I've been in a library. I, can't, I think it's pre-pandemic is the last time I was in here. But we've got to head back to the ship now. We're the last bus to arrive and we don't want to be late because the ship, well, it will wait because we're on a proper excursion. But we don't want to hold everybody else up, do we? Let's go. Let's go. Well, it's been a fun, busy packed day here in Oslo, but let's get back on the bus and head to the ship. Oh, there's the old horn. We're going, that's it. I feel like I should say bye to like Barcelona or Rome with this weather. It doesn't feel like I'm in Scandinavia. It's blooming warm it's out here. It's bloody boiling. It's really warm. But yes, that's it, we're off. Next stop, sunny Southampton. Oh, not so sunny, unfortunately. Boo, Boo. Boo, it sucks. This is the worst bit. We also just got the t luggage tags in our room as well. That's the worst bit. That means get off the ship. Time to go. Should we go upstairs for the sail away party? Is there a sailor party on? Yeah. Is there? Yeah, oh, let's go. go. Oh, maybe we can get a cheeky, dirty banana. Oh, we let's do it. Let's go. Let's, let's go to the sailor away. Come on. Say thank you, oh, I love you. It's a very special moment. Say goodbye to us. Shake their hand, give them a hug, and say thank you for your. Wow, I am so happy that we came upstairs for sailor away. It is really beautiful. It's quite a long sailor way, this one as well, because Oslo is really quite far inland. So we've got some beautiful scenery for ages. We decided to come to the back of the ship. There was a party going on at the main deck, but it was a bit much for us. We wanted to relax at the back and see the beautiful aft as we're sailing away. Absolutely gorgeous. Do make sure that you come up to deck if you're having a sail away, and especially if you've got nice sunshine like this. The best thing about cruising. It is formal night tonight, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go and grab some drinks Take them back to the room. We're going to enjoy them on the balcony. There's usually two formal nights on a seven night cruise on Princess. It is formal, but don't panic about it too much. Just a nice shirt and a suit jacket would do well. But we'll show you what we're wearing later. Oh, just back in the room just to chill out for a little bit. I've got to say these port uh, intensive cruises are really tiring. So do make sure that you leave plenty of room to enjoy yourself and relax on the sea days. These are great days just to, oh, just to chill out, relax and have a lovely chill out day. I've got to admit my legs are hurting a little bit. We've walked very far over these last few days. It's been so lovely to see all of these places we've never seen before. It's a great thing about cruising. We haven't just went on like a vacation to one place. We've went on a vacation to four different places and we haven't had to unpack, which is absolutely fabulous, isn't it? It's just so lovely. And the views outside, I'm just looking out of the balcony now. Wowzers, absolutely amazing. I'm gonna go outside, let the wind go in my hair like a racehorse on a race course. Well, apart from the fact I'm not a racehorse on a race course, but there is wind, so that'll do, won't it? On the balcony, drink in hand, got a filthy, dirty banana. 
No, that isn't an innuendo. This is actually called a, a dirty banana and it's probably our favourite drink on Princess Cruises. God knows what's in it. Plenty of alcohol, Kahlua, chocolate, cream and a bit of squirty tea, cream on top for good measure. Oh yeah, and of course a, ban a full banana which has been blended. Honestly, you have to try this drink. It's bloody appealing. Let's have a go. Oh, and bananas about this drink. Let me tell you about that, people. It's one of those drinks which is basically a meal and a drink in one. But it's so, honestly, it is so good. It's I could just, so tasty. It's, it's, I don't even want to talk. Dude, I might need to run down and get another one straight after. It's so I'm good. I'm going to damn this in about 30. Oh my God. The best thing is you can order them on the TV. I'm having a bloody moment right here. It's just you, a banana and a moment. Well, I'm going to split. I'm going to go get changed now. Do you like the banana jokes? Oh, I'm going to have to have a lie down after that. I feel very ripe after that one. See if I can slip in any more. Ba-boom. Honestly, that was so good. I'm just going to chill out here now on the couch. Just watch the world go by. It's literally the best thing you can do in the whole world, in my opinion. It really is. We've got about 45 minutes until we need to start getting ready. So, oh, pop my feet up. Listen to that sound. That, I can just hear the waves right now. It's just lovely. Just David having a nap. What somebody once said to me, very wise, don't be sad it's over, be happy it happened. It's a really good saying in my opinion. Well, hello everybody. I'm missing my tie. Right, got ready. Missing my tie. I forgot to pack it. Oops, a days of course. Does everybody always forget something? At least it's only a tie. That's not that much, is it, to be fair though. So, But it's formal night, all in my formal gear, my full suit apart from a tie. I'm just going to pretend that I'm modern. Plus I'm wearing trainers as well, and that's not because I don't have posh shoes, because I do have posh shoes, but they're brand new and I cut my feet open so much on the first day I can't get into them, because it's so painful, but hey. But David's much more um, sensible than me. He, he actually brought a tie, didn't he, David? Can we see your outfit? Three, two, one, reveal. He looks lovely, doesn't he? Yeah, formal night, you don't have to be, you don't have to wear top and tails unless you want to. You can get away with a shirt, a tie, no tie. Uh, just, just looks smart, really. Just something a bit special, isn't it? Yeah, should we go get my mum? Let's go and get her. And, uh, Let's do this. Ooh, head, my, the magic of mirrors. Head to the ballroom that we like to call the pub. Fingers crossed um, they're still doing food because it's been closing early this cruise, but if it's not been very busy. Right, let's stick it on to service room. Oh, it's not working. Come on. Come on, little person. Come on. Come on. No. Oh, there we go. All done, all green. Oh, so we've just checked where mum is. It's really good to check beforehand and she is in her cabin. So let's go pick her up. She's on deck eight. You hungry, David? I'm just thinking, this suit's getting a bit tight. I should have wore it at the beginning of the cruise and not the end. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? The clothes do tend to get tighter as the cruise goes on. Bring a, bring a bigger size up. I'm walking like this. Gosh, somebody's oversprayed the old perfume in here, David. It's very smelly in the elevator. Somebody's expecting a good night tonight. Yeah, somebody's trying to impress with their smells. I look like a opera singer or something with, with no tie on. I'm going like semi-formal. I wish I'd bought it. I'm good at that. I forgot it. I've had a hard day at the office and I'm ready to party. Right, Mum, are you all ready? I'm ready. Your nails are just a bit wet, that's all. Your nails are wet. Have you had a good day? I've had a nice day. I went up and I got a bit, bit front buffet. I got a sandwich and a cake. Oh, treat yourself. Yeah. Oh, oh, when you got back? Yeah. Oh, cool. The Norwegian food, not food, uh, fell you. Didn't particularly like it. It's a bit weird, wasn't it? The potatoes were nice. I liked the bread, but when I put that butter on it, it was margarine. Oh. oh, look at her face. Oh, yeah. oh look at oh, that. No. Oh, she's fuming. No, truthfully. My mum's made so many friends on this cruise, she's basically dumped us. She just keeps walking off for people. We've got to use that tracker like 15 times a day. I feel like a caretaker. No, she's having a lovely time. She's met so many wonderful people on the cruise. That's one of the great things about cruising, I guess, isn't it? So we've came back to the dining room again. Why not? As you said, it's so good on Princess and it's gala night, so all of the waiters are dressed up and everything. The fact that you can get the Princess favourites is so tempting to go for that onion soup three times in a row. How bad would that be? I'm going to try something a little bit different, but I am very tempted because that French onion soup is absolutely delicious. They've even got escargot on the menu tonight. Snails. I don't know if I can do it. I really don't. 
There's some posh bread tonight as well. It's very posh and it's very beautiful. Looks like a Danish pastry, but it's bread. Beautiful. It's like a work of art, isn't it? Oh my gosh, that's plum and divine. It tastes like it's going to be very naughty though. I once followed a diet, you know, but it didn't follow me back, so I unfollowed it. Mum, I'm going to make you eat some snails. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You're going to have a snail. I'll have a little bit of a snail, but I won't eat it. What are you going to do with it? Spit it out? If it makes me sick, I'll do what you did at lunchtime. What did I do at lunchtime? With that sweet. Oh God, yeah, I forgot Whatever about that. It was. it was vile. It will like eating treacles. So tonight I'm going double salmon tonight. I'm bookending with the salmon. I've got the salmon starter, which comes in a sweet chilli sauce. It's got a little breadstick on top as well. Don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Ma. Eat it probably, David, or smoke it. Ready, sticky. It's a breadstick. Oh, it's hard. The little green things are uh, hard. It's nice, the sweet chilli sauce gives it a little sweetness and a kick and delicious. It's a nice, great starter. I got the tomato bisque, which is basically a tomato soup. And it's got some mighty big croutons in there as well. It looks very lovely. I can see something very dirty from the side of my eyes. No, I'm not talking about my mum. I'm talking about the snails. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to try one of those, David. Oh, God, I can't eat that. Yeah, you can. No, can't. My mum's just seen them. No. <laughs> This is bad as me. Anyway, the soup is absolutely delicious. It's very tomatoey, very delicious. It's very rich actually. It's got a nice base in there. Would you eat that? You just down it. I'm very close to it because my no, mic's here. You do Come it on. first. Come on, just eat it. No, you eat it. Just eat it. No, you eat one. No, you eat you it. You eat it first. If I eat one, will you eat one? It's like, um, I'm a celebrity, Danielle. <laughs> it is like I'm a celebrity. It's like the Bush took a trial. <laughs> David's going to buy me bingo. Oh, God almighty. It's dripping, the snail's dripping everywhere. We'll do it at the same time. Why don't you okay. pop it on a piece ready? of bread? Th no, just eat the whole thing. Oh, not eat, putting it on bread. Just eat the whole thing. All right, ready? Ready, you better eat it. Three. Steady. Go. You better go. Right, go. Oh. It's disgusting. No. I, I ate it. <laughs> That is the most revolting thing I've ever tasted in my life. Oh, don't, don't do it, darling. Bon appetit. It's delicious. Oh my God, it's not. You're weird, you You can see their faces behind the camera. You are weird. It's not good. You're not going to have another one. Oh, dear, dude. That's delicious. And Ben, you've got my favourite dish so far in this restaurant. I did. So the other day, David got the fettuccine alfredo, which is freshly made pasta in a creamy sauce for a main course. But I got it for a starter this time, so it's just a slightly smaller version. I think it's about the same size, Ben. Who are we kidding? I know, it's in a smaller plate, but it looks almost the same size. But I love pasta. Isn't it just a lovely comfort food? Does anybody, does anybody agree with me? That is absolutely delicious. It's so simple and so... We must only have two or three ingredients, but it's absolutely lovely. So for my second salmon dish of the evening, I went for the seared salmon, which is in a teriyaki glaze. And this is on the princess favorites menu. So that means that it's available every single night and they just change up the sauce every night as well. Salmon's beautifully cooked. I love that teriyaki glaze as well. The one nice thing about the princess favorites is they tend to be made to order. So they do always taste a little bit fresher, a little bit more prepared, ready to order. I've got the beef wellington tonight. I love beef wellington. It's really, really lovely. And the potatoes look very pretty indeed, don't they? Oh, it's very, very tender, guys. It's just falling off the, um, I was going to say falling off the bone there, but there isn't a bone. It's just falling to bits. Let's have a taste of it. Get some of that gravy in there. Well, roll me up like a piece of beef and post me through a letterbox. That is lovely. The beef is probably as good as um, Crown Grill. Really well seasoned, but most of all, it literally is just like falling apart. I've got to try those potatoes as well. Processing. That's a potato, all right. Again, super hot as well. And my mum got the duck, but she doesn't like it because it's it's an Asian dish and she doesn't like Asian food. So I don't know why she ordered it. But hey, I did warn her. What was that? That was, a bit... that was dramatic. <laughs> that was dramatic, Mum. 
Oh, I just told mum I was going to film her eat her food and she just gave me the weirdest look. But she likes a cheesecake. Anyway, I went for something. I think she liked it a lot. She, yeah, she's already ate half of it. You're shuffling that down, mum, is it nice? nice. Uh, anyway, I've got something a bit different. You can make your own sundae every night. They've got various different types of gelato, like chocolate and vanilla. Loads of different toppings and loads of different sauces. I went for vanilla with whipped cream, <laughs> pineapple and butterscotch. Sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? But hey, I thought, thought what the heck? Bet nobody's had this combination before. And I fancied something a bit different, so should we have a little tasty? The gelato, though. Yes, the gelato is the winner of life right now. It is absolutely delicious. The pineapple really works with the butterscotch and the vanilla ice cream. Who would have thought? It's doing all sorts of things for me, this. That is blooming gorgeous, if I say so myself. Look at that, the sun's shining behind you. They've opened up the curtains again, but it's still so bright. Is my head shining? It's almost half nine, so 9.30 in the evening. You look like an angel, you're glowing. Touched by an angel. Oh, look at that, he's a lovely little Catholic boy now. Riddled with guilt. I got the chocolate boob. Ken told me I had to get it, so I tried it. I had to get it? Yeah. He didn't take much convincing. So it's like a cake base with a mousse in the middle and a layer of dark chocolate on the top. Is it good? It's actually, I thought it was going to be really gelatinous. Just sometimes you see things like this and they just taste like jelly, but actually, that mousse is really delicious. And in case I hadn't had enough chocolate, I also ordered the Monte Carlo hot chocolate. It's one of the specialty drinks. It's like a hot drink at the end of the night. It's got some liquor in it. I think it was called Monte Carlo. Something it similar. It sounds like Monte Carlo. I Sounded, don't think it quite was, but... Yeah. Let's try it. Oh, you're glowing again, dude. Am I glowing again? You're like truly angelic. I'm just gonna part, part the cream so I don't want cream all over my face like I did the other night. Oh, he's like Moses. Ooh. I can taste the booze. I like a boozy chocolate dessert. Mmm. So good. Oh, I'm so full. I feel like Humpty Dumpty. If I was on that wall, I'd definitely fall off it. But that was lovely. I just want to say a big thanks to Jeff from the Philippines and Floyd from India as well. They were our servers every night and they were absolutely amazing. So thanks guys. Really good service on board, Princess, as always. I don't think Ben knows this, but Humpty Dumpty was a big cannon. I don't know what she's talking about, guys. Humpty Dumpty was a cannon. Anyway, we're going to head off and enjoy the night on board. Jack. The water is like glass tonight. It's absolutely beautiful. The colours are just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Well done, Ocean. You look beautiful tonight. It's all dressed up for um, formal night as well. The sun is still so high. It is like 10 p.m. now. This is legit ridiculous. It is so bright. It's not just like even slightly sunsetty. It's like bright daylight. Honestly, I just I just can't get over it. We've we've done a midnight cruise before, but I never get used to this. It's just it's amazing. You get so much vitamin D because it just never goes blooming down. It must be knackered. The sun's always up here. It must be absolutely tired. It doesn't even get a blooming break. Anyway, we've got lots of shows, trivia, all of that jazz. My mum's desperate to go to the casino. We're going to have a really good night, but I'm just super sad that it's almost over. But I'm so glad we finally got to take my mum on a cruise. Oh, this just feels amazing. I could literally sleep like this right now. Mind you, I might fall over, but that's, I think it'd be quite cold because it is quite north. <laughs> really is lovely there's live music in about four venues that we've just passed that's so lovely it's one thing we love about cruising is all the live music but before the show the world famous comedian Rory Bremner the impressionist is going to be on tonight we're going to go play in the casino but we can't film here see we're doing new things because my mum wants to do it it's the great thing about taking somebody new on a cruise I'm not going to lose any money though trust me let's do this all these beautiful countries Norway and Denmark and Swindon and uh, 
When you're on a ship, it's a challenge. <laughs> Get you out of the suit. It's so blooming oh. stuffy in it. We've had such a lovely day today, guys. We're back in our balcony, believe it or not, just before midnight, five to midnight, and it is still, you can see, like slightly blue and sunsetty over there as well. It's so crazy. It's one of the most amazing things about doing these Northern Europe cruises, isn't it? It is, and it's nice and cool out here. It was quite warm in that theatre. It was very popular, wasn't it? It was. It was a very, very funny show. Rory Bremner, a famous impressionist in the UK, absolutely hysterical. Did some great impressions of uh, people like Boris Johnson and Donald Trump. Anyway, that's it for this series on the amazing Enchanted Princess. Thank you so much for watching please do hit that subscribe button. And if you join our mailing list just below in the link section below, we'll send you an email every time we upload so you don't miss out on a video. And thank you as well to all of our amazing patrons. It's because of your support that we're able to keep this channel going and growing. If you'd like to become a patron in return, you receive benefits, including ad-free videos, plus early access to our videos, and a patron Zoom call every single month. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising. It's a bit windy. I'm gonna go in now, it's a bit chilly. Night guys. Look